Shabbat. Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat family. Back at it again. What's up, man? How y'all feeling, man? I hope y'all feeling great, man. I'm feeling good. And at this point, good is better than great. Hey, um. I've been hearing a lot to the wind, man. A lot to the wind, man. It's funny style. I've been hearing a lot to the wind, but today it's like um, what I'm feeling is that um, I'm feeling like a motherless child. Well, I'm, I'm not feeling like that. That's what y'all trying to make a brother feel like because... Y'all trying to take my land. <laughs> but the creator ain't gonna let y'all keep my land, man. That's what y'all not feeling to realize. I understand how y'all got a whole petition the army to, to now bring up the fact that these so-called African Americans are African now, right? Now you got some members of, of the African group saying that that we from Africa. Now? Now? 2018? Why is that? When the 1800s, we wasn't from Africa. In the 1500s, we wasn't from Africa. In the 1600s, we wasn't from Africa. Now listen, man. I don't have nothing against Africa. Africa is my brother, it's my cousin, that's my family. The people there are my family. I don't have no problem with that. But are y'all saying that the indigenous from Australia is from Africa? Man, listen, man. Stop listening to these, to the oppressors. Stop listening to these white folks tell you about you. You know what I'm saying? Now, the Book of Prophecies, they said that they didn't know how. All they know is when they got here, we was here. All they know when they when Cham got here now, well, let me explain. When all they know is when they seen when when this mongrel got over here, we was here. Melanated man, we all family. But best believe, this is our land. So stop trying to make my people feel like a motherless child. These are Maru Khans are ours, and you know that. And everybody around the world knows that. So stop playing with us, man, about this land. This is our mama. This is our sacred land. This land was sacred. You know what I'm saying? This land was didn't adhere to no idols. Y'all stop playing. Y'all know what's up with this land. So I got my boy Richie Havens, man. I got it, man. I gotta get something off my chest. So I'm gonna let my boy Richie Havens do what he do. God body. Oh yeah. Before I forget. And never can I forget. Thou would die. But why? For making this all. Making our promise. Making this all possible. Thank you, Hawa. Thank you, Hawa, our king, for making this all possible. Thank you for bringing your prophet, Thawa die for bringing your prophet Moses to write the Torah. Thank you for bringing our judge, our Shua. You call him Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Shua, Hamashiach. See, one day y'all gonna understand that all these people that I'm talking about, Solomon is black. David is black. All these melanated men. And y'all realize that you nagas are being niggas. Still, because you fighting against your will. Your will, your strength, you taking it all away from you when you deny your father. You doing the same thing that the white man done. Do you realize that when you take a look at it? 
the white man denied Hawashua, the Hamashiach. The white Jews denied Hawashua, Hamashiach. You know what they did? They called him a monkey. Look in the Babylonian Tammuz. 57a. It'll show you how they did Hawashua, Jesus Christ. Y'all ain't understanding this. The anointing, the Messiah. They'll show you how they did our people. I mean, God is black. Hawa is black. And that's the best way I can put it. So, Thawada. To our father. How Yeshua said. Don't call no other man. No one else father but the creator. You look over in Qumran. You see. Melanated men. They call them Ethiopian. Guarding the tomb. And you niggas arguing about. I know we come a long way, man. And man, if we didn't break down this shit, man, if we didn't break down your mental to accept yourself, you still don't love yourself now? We broke down a scissors and messiah. Look at our look at our biblioteca, the books. Hebrews worship the creator and when they defiled the creator they worship idols and the most high sent them prophets to worship him prophets to get back to the creator you not acknowledging the prophets because you don't understand I don't give, I don't care, I don't care about what the oppressor has dual, dualated, dualated. I don't care about what the oppressor has, what he has. You can't even say what he created because he ain't create shit. The devil don't create nothing. But you see what he's created, this duality. Y'all paying so much attention to the duality. That you're going to miss your mark. You're going to miss your prophecy. Because you worried about. The devil. Because you worried about. The enemy. Because you worried about. The nigga who got you brainwashed. And you listening to. Naysayers. Man, listen, this ain't about you, it's about us. And the only way we're gonna unite is one. Only way we're gonna unify is through the heart, is through Shekinah. Shekinah is how a shoe. You wanna worry about the wrong thing. Do you understand what they did to Hashua? They called him a monkey. They spit in his face. They hit him in the head with sticks. Yet you're doing the same thing. 
you're doing the same thing. I, I see why brothers say you worship the white God. I see why brothers say that Christians worship a white God and why so-called niggas who don't like Christians worship a white God. Because you worshiping the white Jews and you don't understand these white Jews don't like how a sure because because what? He told them they are the synagogue of Satan. He told them Satan was their father. So look, man. You can get on that ship if you want to. But this one right here, this standing firm. We dock. We dock like elephant tusks on the bow of a sailing lady. Those who have a ear here. But yeah, man, y'all... Y'all making me homesick and I ain't even left home. You making me feel like a mother and a fatherless child because I know... You making my people feel that way. You confusing my people by your chaos and your bitterness and your anger. And your interpretation is weak. And ain't got no legs to stand on. I'm doing this for my people for real, man. This is for real. This is for real spill. I ain't asked for shit. Nothing. We got two problems. We don't know where we from. At least we act like it. And we don't know who our creator is. And what he's done for us. I don't know if we know the smell of freedom, man. I don't know if we know the smell of freedom. Because uh, when I think of how it's sure, I smell freedom. I smell salvation. Because y'all don't understand it. They're going to have to pay for what they did to my people. They're going to pay for what they did to Yahshua. To how a shoe. They're gonna pay for what they did to Jesus Christ. See, you gotta think. You gotta understand why they telling you one story, especially in the book of. Uh, Especially in Caesar's Messiah, while they telling you one story, another story is happening. Pilates got Yahshua crucified. So they tell you it's about this Greek invasion. Now you understand. All this law is law, but really this law has hardened your heart.
And that one voice, man, you really don't realize it's hard in your heart. Your heart has been hard from your own people, how we can just watch each other get beat down in the street and not do nothing. How we can watch how anybody can harm our, our mother, our women, our sister, and abuse them and we do nothing. We allow our own people to do it. Our own people hate the fact when someone is trying to uplift our people and that's just real. They always want to crucify something or somebody just for change. But it's going down. Oh yeah, it's going up. So So we're going to pray to our Father and how is she was named? Because what y'all did to him. I won't forget what I can't wait to forget, me. man. Let's go to Isaiah 53, man. See, one thing that we don't understand or overstand is the fact that just like the Sakari, we angry, we bitter, we upset, we mad at our oppressor, we mad at the one who has tried to oppress us. But the Creator has given us salvation. But with a combination of fear and anger, we haven't even opened our eyes to see our salvation because of fear mixed with anger. Because what you do, you are mad at the one who oppressed you. So you hide. You hide. So you got to come out of your hiding place. I'm talking to the seed. Come out of your hiding place. And declare what the Father has done for you and your people. That's what Yahshua is all about and you understand because they took in all the way to colorism from your father. When that's in one point, in one point in life where you need to see the colorism. Your father created you. First, you, the melanated man. created you first. You are a seed. But yet we defile and we don't even understand him. They call Yahshua a monkey. They spit in his face and they hit him in the head with sticks. And in the Tammuz, the Babylonian Tammuz 57a, it said Yahshua that they wanted to boil him in excrement, in shit, in feces. Why do you think they did that? Why do you think they, because he told them, he called them out for who they were. These were the Jews. He called them out for who they were. He told them that they were Satan. See, we too busy trying to be the white man. And we don't understand that when the white man overthrew us. 
when he was allowed to overthrow us, the Creator allowed him to overthrow us. And he would force our seed, he would declare our seed his. And we don't overstand the fact that a prophet was sent particularly for that because of what we done to the creator the creator will scatter us all abroad and become the tail of a weaker nation so man we can't forget what we done with our can't forget what we done for our people. This how it should. So man, if y'all ain't feeling it, y'all just need to do a little more soul searching, a little more reading. Because you gotta understand at some point that to, to, to deny how it should is to deny your creator. To deny Jesus Christ is to, die, to deny your creator. And if you can't, if you can't see, then maybe you have become your enemy. In the Caesar's Messiah, the Hebrews had a Messiah before even the Greeks even came along. That's what y'all not failing to realize. And y'all be like, oh yeah, it was David. You defiled David. Oh, then it was Elijah. You had Elijah head cut off. You had Phineas locked up. Everyone that spoke about the Creator, you had them locked up. So how during the Roman invasion was... Yahshua locked up. You know what I'm saying? How was he killed during the Roman invasion? How was he killed? How was all the prophets locked up during the Roman invasion? Because they were speaking for you and you were hiding. That's what you don't realize. And that the book, The Caesars of Messiah, they don't want you to understand that that at the same time they're telling you this, this duality story of Vespasian becoming, imitating this Yahshua, that it was really going down in your land. In the Americas, it was really going down. So the Creator is, is back. It's coming back for his people, man. That's what y'all not realizing. You got to come. You have to prophesy, man. You got to come to your prophecy. You got to come back. Because that's what it's all about. We're looking for this Prester John. You got to understand this is what this is all about. We're looking for this priest king. This was all about the seed of David. The scepter. The scepter. I ain't trying to hear what all these naysayers are talking about. This is that seed, the Levitical priest seed of David. These were so called Nagas. These were the son, the sons of the father. Isaiah 53, man. Isaiah 53. Who have believed our report? This is in Isaiah 53. You know, a lot of y'all like to go to Isaiah 43, right? Let's go to Isaiah 43 real quick, right? Isaiah 43, Israel's only Savior. 
But now thus saith the Lord Hawa that created thee, O Jacob, Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called by name. Thou art mine. When thou hast passed through the waters, I will be with thee. When you pass through the waters, I was with thee, or with thee through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall thy flame kindle upon thee. For I am Hawa thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt thy ransom, Ethiopia, and Seba for thee. Okay. Everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yeah, I made him. Alright. Bring forth the blind that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. Let all nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled, who among can declare this shoe. So, I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God, formed neither shall there be after me. Right? That's Isaiah 43, 40, whatever. Okay? 43. 44 is Israel, the Lord's chosen. Hawa's chosen. Right? And you get down to 53. Isaiah 53. You ever read Isaiah 53? Let's check it out. Isaiah 53. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Hawa revealed? To whom is the arm of Hawa revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground, he have no form, no comingness, comingliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem his stricken. We did esteem him stricken, smitten of Hawa and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Hmm. He was bruised for our iniquities. Hmm. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Hmm. Isaiah 53. Verse 5. With his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone from his own way. We have turned everyone from his own way in your only way. And Hawa have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. That means his sheep was dumb. That means we were so stupid. Fear. 
we were filled with fear. So he opened his mouth not. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence because he had done no violence so he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth yet it pleased Hawa to bruise him he hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed he shall prolong he shall see his seed his seed he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of Hawa shall prosper in his hand Yet it pleased Hawa to bruise him. It pleased Hawa to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. <laughs> he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of Hawa shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul. And shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. He shall see of the travail of his soul. And shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he shall bear the sin of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. Hmm. Isaiah 53 now you go back over that the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe this is all about you so called Naga This is all about your seed, Naga. At this point, we must correlate that. Those white Jews are denying you, Naga. I want to give y'all some homework. I want y'all to find a white Jew and go up to him and just ask him. As, as if you believe in you right ask them ask them say excuse me Shalom excuse me but why is it that you don't like Hawashua Hamashiach or Jesus Christ and he'll give you the same answer for both of them so if the scriptures say, for they are the synagogue of Satan. Okay. And you feel that, that they're racist against you, right? So, are they racist against Hawashu or Jesus Christ too? So what does that mean? 
if he is from the seed of Jesse, is he's from the same seed of Solomon, he's from the same lead seed of Samson. Samson has seven locks. You know he was a so-called Naga. So we talking about this seed. All I want to tell you is one last time, which won't be the last time, that if you deny, by denying Yahshua, Hamashiach, by denying Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, which is Yahshua, Hamashiach, then you deny, Moses didn't even deny Yahshua, Moses didn't even deny him. And I'm saying this more blindly, more plain than I could ever explain it. Because this whole time we've been talking about us. Us. So y'all go back over that and y'all roll it down slowly. Do the strong support in the Hebrew, you know what I'm saying? Figure what you need to figure out, man. And uh, I'm open for questions. Get at me. But when you get at me, come correct. Don't come, don't come at me like you haven't watched not one video. Alright? Shalom. But check this out. You ain't gotta worry about naysayers. Because you can just get you some popcorn. You can just get you some popcorn and, and watch the naysayers and you're gonna see how they fall by the wayside. You're going to see how they fall by the wayside because this strength of Yahshua is, is, is your strength. It is your direct strength. You know, you better do your homework. Because that uh, law don't stand strong with out the actual interpretation of the law. Yahshua is the interpretation of the law. So all these niggas who talk about the law, the law, the law, who actually don't know the law or cannot comprehend what the law means, taking it for a literal sense, not understanding because they're thinking from a Greek mind mentality, a Greek philosophy. When you get back to the Hebrew language, man, remember, one word meant three different actions. So you got to get back to the complexity of your law, and that's by the one who actually came in the law. You don't understand what these whites have been holding against us for the longest. And the Most High brought you something special to go against what you were all scared to go against. The fire burned for you, man. Just, we got to get it popping and come on home. But let's continue this grind though. Let's continue this grind. We're getting into this Choctaw. This tribe. We're going to dig a little deeper man. Um, We don't want to deal with the misconceptions. What we want to do is all, all positive energy. Now, the misconception is the fact that, again, you keep saying that Africa is our land. 
And I just want to say, have you ever took time to think about all the indigenous plants that are here only in the Americas? And then can you think about all the indigenous plants that are, that are, that are indigenous to America and also indigenous to Asia and or Africa? See, you don't understand the enemy's tool that he will use against you to fight you. We got to stop falling for his tricks. The Most High put us all over the world, all over the land, just like he did the plants. So, you talk about the slavery and how we were all brought over here. It's the first time us seeing America, but I got a whole bunch of other different shit, uh, different stories, different um, instruments to say that that's a far fetch, that the Amaru Khans, that indigenous Amaru Khans were melanated people and are melanated people. The indigenous tribes of the Amaru Khans are melanated people, the clans before Columbus, before Cortez, before De Soto, before all these uh, before Langley, before all these what you call explorers or invaders before Macintosh before all these invaders man let's go back to the 1500s De Soto was one of the first to come over into these lands where they recorded it with the actual these colleges in Mississippi these colleges these universities they actually hold the records to all this information that we're looking for Brown University all these colleges hold the information so now man I'm digging man. now we on this Choctaw for a reason We're on this Choctaw for a reason, the Shata, because uh, we know this is one of the civilized tribes, or one of the portion of tribes that was civilized. But uh, there's a whole complexity of <laughs> stories that go with that. But it's the fact that a Choctaw tribe is one of your civilized tribes right but like I was telling you before there are so many tribes so many clans or tribes that are into this Choctaw now a Choctaw tribe is a tribe that was near your Mississippi areas in your Mississippi before the uh, the breaking off of your Mississippi Louisiana and a bunch of other land masses whenever I introduce Choctaw culture I am reminded of our tribal ancestors who still live in our collective memory. The stories of their lives full of both triumph and tragedy. Now you gotta get this out your head, people. And it's funny how he, the devil got you niggas warm because it's like, you can't put, you can't understand how The creator is the creator of all things. Meaning that you can't correlate being indigenous with being in the scriptures and the Torah. You can't correlate, you can't put that together. You think that this is some old English or something and you don't understand that 
These are none but tribes that are in the scriptures. Tribes, tribes everywhere. Before you, before we created this, this, uh, this, uh, this caste system, you understand? Everything is tribal. Everything. The treaties are tribal. Everything is tribal. When you go to even in, in countries in Africa, they're still tribal. It's, it's you, Naga, that's been so brainwashed. You, your own enemy. To not overstand. To not try to link these things together. You, your own enemy, man. The story of their lives full of both triumph and tragedy remind us how strong the Choctaw heritage and they are the background against which our current uh, renaissance of Choctaw cultural arts, educational achievements and progressive economic developments are, are uh, illuminated. What it means to be Choctaw is deeply rooted within each of us. Our identity ultimately defined by our blood continues from generation to generation our strong inner spirit that has sustained us throughout history manifests itself again and again in beautiful and creative ways outwardly towards others tribal chief Beasley Denson Choctaw Nation this is in 2004 all right but and, two, and this is in 1908. This is an actual photo of a Choctaw family in traditional clothing. Traditional clothing means, okay, this is the family from the Europeans. This is clothing from the Europeans. This is in 1908. All right? And they're still Choctaw. You understand? These are actual Indian families in 1908 in Mississippi. Okay, now Choctaw is like saying the Hollywood name, right? So there is, these are, this clan will be a Pacific clan. We'll get into that. A Pacific clan, like the Zimri clan. You understand that's in the scriptures of, you understand what I'm saying? Of Akan when he, uh, when he defiled the creator by stealing something. He's from the Zimri, he's from the Zimri family, the Zimri tribe. Okay, which was a Benjamin, which was a Benjamin tribe. Okay, so therefore, which was a tribe of Benjamin, but they had their own particular last name or tribe name, which was family name. Okay, you get it, which was Zimri. So this Choctaw is a broad name. You know what I'm saying? Under a civilized tribe from the government, but yet and still they have their own individual names okay and uh family names that reflected the land okay reflected the land so this is the choctaw flag now let's get into a little bit of the, some of this history the choctaw are proud people with the arduous ar arduous history like their neighbors, the Cherokee, the Choctaw were forced to move from their land. There is also a history of intrigue and glory. One reason is that their forefathers played an important role during the World War I in this country. In the following pages, you will learn the meanings of code talkers, head flattings, and the Green Corn Festival. Okay, the ant ant descendants ant descendants of the Choctaw people that just mean uh, descendants before or after were part of a very large group of Indians which inhabited the southern and, and middle Mississippi Valley region okay so they so we know the Choctaw uh, the tribes the tribes the families in the Choctaw tribe inhabited the southern and middle Mississippi Valley region as much as 4,000 to 8,000 years ago. 
Okay, several Spanish expeditions in the early 1500s um, might have extracted, I mean contracted the, Ch the Choctaw. But there is no question that Hernando de Soto in 1540 expedition encountered them. Okay, the Choctaw inflicted and a significant loss on DeSoto's men in the battle near present-day Mobile, Alabama in 1541 and DeSoto expedition never recovered from the violent confrontation. Okay, so this is telling you that four to eight thousand years ago that this, these people were in the Americas. So now you can equivalent even your, you know, your, uh, from your 1500s. And it still doesn't match up with the time. So therefore, you know what time it is. Okay, so it's it'll be easy right now for us to, to figure out what the actual tribes that we were in. Because you can, like, all you gotta, you know, all you gotta do is, like, find out what southern parts that you are from. Because all you did is migrate. You migrated up these parts so you figure out where you were from for, for the southeast uh, Indians. You figure out what part of the south you were from. And then it'll be a recorded that the, the tribes that were there, the clans that was there. So it'll be a Choctaw, Cherokee, one of the five civilized tribes. But then you have your family within that tribe, your clan. And it'll be in this recorded, so that's what that's what we that's what we have to do. As with all of the other American Indian tribes, the Choctaw had always had conflicts with various neighbors. Most notably the Chicksaw. Now that's crazy because the Chickasaw that's our own people. You understand? But they were different melanated people with different beliefs. But the coming of the Europeans greatly intensified the wars and battles. So now we come with the invasions and now it's even he's greatly more because now they're they're helping each side. Beginning about 1700s, both British and French invaders. You got two invaders at the same time, British and French. So they're dividing and conquering us. Traders need for trade relations with the tribes. With the Choctaw ending up allied with the French and the Chickasaw allied with the British. <laughs> now we fighting, we helping them fight us over our own territory. Besides direct conflicts between the British and the French due to their European wars, the traders stirred up many additional wars between the Choctaw and the Chickasaw tribe. The traders also caused conflict between the Choctaw and the Creeks. When the French and the Indian War ended in 1763, the Treaty of Paris removed the French from east of the Mississippi River and the Choctaw became part of Britain's empire. During the American Revolution, some Choctaw fought the colonists under Washington and other generals while other Choctaw fought on the side of the British. Following the American Revolution 1783, the Choctaw signed a treaty of Hopewell with the with the new United with the new United States, placing the tribe under the protection of the new government. However, pressure from the white settlers steadily increased and by the 1800s, the Choctaw were beginning to cede from their lands. That means our lands was, we were being ran from them, they were being taken. In 1811, the noted Shawnee chief, Tukamesh, was attempting to establish an Indian confederate, confederacy to resist further encroachment. Now we talked about Tukamesh, remember? Skawatawa and Tukamesh. See how it all come full circle. So this is in 1811. In 1811. Now, Skatawa, Watawa, and Tukamesh understood, understood our creator. You can see them 
implementing that. And so what they tried to do is form this confederacy with melanated people. With melanated people. With melanated people, man. They tried to form a confederacy with melanated people, with the Indian against against these organizations, these these companies that were coming in. He asked the Choctaw, the Choctaw to become part of the Federacy, but the Choctaw chose not to join him and attempted to live in harmony with the United States. See, we thought that that would be better. Yet, throughout this time, pressure on the Choctaw to leave their traditional grounds steadily increased. So we thought it'd be a little better in harmony with the U.S., but we just got booted out. Because the U.S. had an agenda. In 1830, then President Andrew Jackson forced the Choctaw to be the first tribe to be removed from their homelands and relocated in Oklahoma. Okay? And then you know what happened in Oklahoma. So how can you sit up here and say that the Naga, the so-called Naga, who you, who you made a nigga, right? How can you say that he is not the indigenous of this land. When it so much evidence point to the Naga and know that the Naga is, I mean, come on, man. This is simple math. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know what I'm saying? Because when you push us out, you sent us with nothing. You push us out to Oklahoma and what happened in Oklahoma? What happened in Greenswood, Oklahoma? <laughs> Come on, man. Almost 15,000 traveled while 5,000 remained behind in Mississippi. And that's the same thing what happened to Israel. The same thing happened all over the world. Forget what they were doing. We ourselves were denying ourselves. We were denying ourselves. The 5,000 that remain somehow understood. They wanted to keep their land. You understand? They wanted to keep the land. Remain behind in Mississippi. Many died along the paths, victim of diseases, exposures, and malnutrition. The newly removed Choctaw tribe set about building new lives in Oklahoma, establishing schools and churches, drafting written laws and a constitution, and taking on many of the white settlers' ways. During the American Civil War, 1861-1865, most of the Choctaw sided with the Confederacy and several Choctaw battalions were raised. Okay, during the American Civil War, 1861-1865, most of the Choctaw sided with the Confederacy now, and several Choctaw battalions were raised with this Confederacy that, remember, Tukumesh started. Though none saw extensive battle during World War One, 1914-1918, many Choctaw fought and 14 Choctaw men became Indian code talkers using their language for military communications, which could not be deciphered by German enemy. Yeah, y'all dig into that, man. Dig into that, man, because that's real. So here's some of the, uh, well, here is the actual land. We talking about the 1500s. All right, we know the dumb, the verses 1492. We know... So this is around that time, brother, that it would have been so many melanated people in the lands. Look at this. All right. Overstand. Overstand. This is just recently. Okay. Just recently. So therefore, you got to understand that at the same time. What are we talking about when we say the Greeks and the Canaanites? 
So at the same time, you seeing blacks, you seeing whites. You look at the general of uh, the general armies of of Caesar, of Alexander. The general armies of Alexander were Canaanites. So it would make it right that they were white people. You seen white, so-called white people during this time. You seen Jews trying to move into your land. You seen white people, so-called white Jews moving into your land. Why? Why is that? So how can you say that you weren't worshiping the creator? Do you understand that? It wasn't about eating rabbits and medicine man. It was bigger than that. That's the only that's the only thing that you 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 remembering. It was bigger than that cuz you're not remembering this journey. This journey through salvation, you're not remembering this journey. This fight has this fight this taking this takeover has us blind to the fact what happens or what's happening in the mist so look at the land we got blackfoot land we got kwa kwa kitu land the plateau the chinook look at this and this is the Great Basin by California, the Mojave, Navajo, Hopi, Sunni, Apache. All the way to your Mexico's. Look in your New York's. In your New York, you got the Sididi, you got these Sididi uh, Indian tribes, the Algonquian, Ottawa, Haran. You got Iroquois. Okay. These were your tribes that were coming over from the Africas, the Greek tribes. From your, your, you know what I'm saying? From your Middle East. Your Algonquians. What you call your Middle East. Yeah, I know. Your Algonquians and your Oroquias. You know what I'm saying? They were mixing in with the uh, the the uh, Assyrian tribes or not. You know, the Middle Eastern tribes, I should say. Delaware Indians. Your Shawnee. Your Cherokee. Look at this. Florida. The Seminole. Choctaw, right here on the water, man. And then they're not showing you the Mississippi running all the way through. So yeah, man, your land, you have your land, your history right here. Right here in the Omaru Khans in the South Americas, North America, Central. Man, don't get it twisted. All over these, this, this beautiful these hemisphere to your Australia's to your Canada man this beautiful hemisphere is going down all right with a ray of descendants of Shem there were antecedent a thing or event that existed before or logically precedes a person ancestors or family and the social background. Let's check out James Meredith, man. Choctaw Nation in Mississippi. Because we getting back to the rooter, man. We getting back to the root. Big ups to my Geechee over there in the Carolinas. My Yuchi tribe. Big ups to, uh, to uh, Chief Langley over there in the Uchi territory as I understand it um, at one point years and years ago generations ago the Choctaw basically the, the land that is now known as Mississippi was Choctaw land well that was the last uh, hundred years at the, in the beginning, the whole South, what is now known as the South, was uh, one republic, one nation. And the uh, 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 center 
they, this ran from Texas, Louisiana and Texas, west of the Mississippi River in Arkansas, all the way to the Atlantic Ocean, and from the Gulf Coast all the way to Virginia. And the, uh, 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 they all spoke the same language, and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, so this was the, uh, uh, the, the system that existed when the Europeans came. Now, even the... So the system of the Europeans, when they came, we all spoke one language from four different, from Mississippi to Alabama to, to Texas, to Texas, to Louisiana, to the Atlantic. So you have to understand how powerful we were. The Europeans acknowledge uh, that the, uh, I think they call them the seven civilized tribes, but of course the, the historians credit the Choctaw with being the most uh, uh, highly advanced of them all. And actually, how the Choctaw and Mississippi come, the governing district, like Washington, D.C., was always Mississippi, central Mississippi. And as the territory became smaller, ultimately, only Mississippi and Alabama was there. And then in the end, only Mississippi was there. So uh, that is... Uh, uh, how the uh, the process went. I understand that that is that your great great grandfather was one of the last official um, elected leaders of the Choctaw Nation. Right. Uh, you see the uh, uh, <coughs> right. It was my great great grandfather uh, and uh, his name was General Sam Cobb. Now of course the, uh, by the 1800s almost all uh, uh, Native Americans east of the Mississippi River had taken on European names and that uh, uh, so uh, but he was pure Native American, uh, and his uh, rank was, of course, British, because uh, uh, most all of the European nations gave, uh, you know, the uh, they either, you know, you hear the French and Indian War, but uh, every war, almost, you had the Native Americans fighting either on one side or the other for the European, and of course. Uh, before he became the elected uh, uh, national leader, uh, he was uh, uh, for many years an officer in the uh, uh, in the uh, British and particularly in the American uh, uh, military. So yeah, he said his, uh, what was the name? He said his, uh, his great-grandfather was actual chief over there, which is true. And, uh, so you see how his information, just with the information that he gave, you can actually, that's enough information to work with, man, to be able to, you know, find, you know, documentation on you being a, a, in the lineage and descendant from your, from your tribes. That's it, man. So, Mississippi Choctaw rejected status. Just the other day, when my mom was going through some family records on my dad's side, she came across this gym. 
from what I can tell, this is an application for a newborn for Native American status in the case Mississippi Choctaw. All right, so we can't zoom it in, but you can just see. Uh, it's for a newborn. This is a roll, Mississippi Choctaw roll. There's a roll. You know what I'm saying? It's a roll, like a doll's roll or something like that. So as you can see, man, all this stuff is recorded. And then the state, the, the, the land that you're from, they got colleges, universities right there. And then go to that nearest university and there's a lot of things recorded, man, that leads back to your ancestors. They ain't telling us. All right, you got to go find it yourself, man. But it's, it's there for you. It's there for us. Okay, the Mississippi Choctaw are the ones who chose to stay behind after the Treaty of Dancing Rabbit Creek. Alright, so we know we gotta get into that. Okay, okay, let me look at that. Okay, we're gonna get into that. So they stayed behind in the Mississippi while others were removed due to the Indian Removal Act in 1830. Now I hit you over the head with that. Remember in uh, 1830, that was McIntosh who was over there, Attorney General. And uh, I hit you over the head with that, with that Indian Removal Act. Okay, that went from all the way from the Canadas all the way down to the Americas. Okay, so they stayed behind. Okay, so there was a treaty called Treaty of Dancing Rabbit Creek. Okay, obviously they stayed behind in the Mississippi while others were removed due to the Indian Removal Act. Those who didn't leave were required to register and remain on allocated land in Mississippi or Alabama. So they were required to register and remain on allocated land. Okay, but this was poorly done and would lead to descendants of those who stayed having to appeal to be recognized as members of the tribes they belong to. All right. So you see how that game, once you, you leave the land and try to, or you, or once you disassociate it from your land is where you basically, where they say, you, you know what I'm saying? Where they don't recognize you now because uh, it was poorly done. Descendants of those who stayed behind, they had we had to appeal to be recognized as members of the, of the tribes that we belong to when they moved to Indian territory. When they moved to Indian territory later on, which which is what is happening in the picture above. Okay, so that was the road. So they were moved over, and then the record was law to them moving out of the land and who they were. Okay. However, in 1887, the Dawes Act was passed, followed by the Curtis Act. Okay, now you go to my uh, one of the videos. I don't know the name of it, but you go. I don't remember the name, but one of my videos where I had the Dawes Act, where you can go into that Dawes role and type in some of your information. Also, followed by Curtis Act, the Curtis Act of 1819. I hope y'all taking notes, which amended it. Okay. Both of these acts were meant to assimilate Native Americans or indigenous Americans and transfer lands to white Americans. You, did you hear me? Okay, however, in 1887, the Dawes Act was passed, followed by the Curtis Act of 19, I mean of 18, 1898, which amended it. Both of these acts were meant to assimilate the indigenous American and transfer lands to whites, Amer white so-called Americans. The Curtis Act also gave the Dawes Commission the authority to determine who was Native American. So when we, when you filled out into that Dawes Act, it gave them what they thought. It gave them uh, it gave their commission the authority to determine who was Native American, as opposed to the tribes themselves telling you a various and various other issues when it came to Native American ancestry. Uh, one was that someone of multiple tribes could only claim one tribe. 
Another was that the tribes actually didn't manage enrollment and that and the tribes themselves didn't always have blood requirements the same way the Dawes Commission did. Furthermore, many people did sign up because of fear of government persecution if they were formally registered. Fear tactics. Another issue was the manipulation of these acts and others to deprive indigenous Americans of their land and surplus land would belong to the federal government which was then resold to white Americans along with other bills such as the Five Civilized Tribes Act of April 26, 1906 I hope y'all taking notes enough land has been removed from the indigenous American control and sold to white settlers that Oklahoma was able to become a state in 1907 That Oklahoma was able to come to state because so many of us got pushed there. Let's look a little closer at the document, which is a result of all of this and other things going on. Let's see if we can get a closer view. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. So, as you can see, it says Choctaw Nation. Right here, Post Office. Okay, so the name right here, Newborn Mississippi Choctaw Row. Okay, the name, William. Can't see the last name. Stay. Okay, see a mech, sex of male, one. Okay, name of father. Okay, name of mother. And this is the newborn. Descent on November the 5th, 1905. This is the newborn, 1905. Okay. Now this is the same time we got so many enemies working against us. 1905 is when the Rockefeller was starting to, to implement this Church of Christ. Right? But it, it was emulating someone who had fought for you. So this is on the same times that you got to understand that. That they're emulating something. They're emulating something at this time. 1907, they're emulating something. Something that you're not even aware about at this time in 1907, you being taken from your Indian heritage, your Indian uh, character to another character. Uh, so, lack of better words, but your Indian, you know what I'm saying? All your Indian responsibilities to a person with no responsibilities. Okay, then it says a little something down here. Application for number one received July 26, 1906. Mother of, I can't read this, applicant and NCR 608, some, some type of numbers. July, okay. As most people know, the territory that the indigenous Americans were located to become the state of Oklahoma. You know that. Okay, and I hit you over the head with that drop. The location at the top left of the document has Choctaw Nation. And then Durant IT, which was then Durant Indian Territory, now Durant, Oklahoma. The Act of Congress approved April 26, 1906, referred in this document is Five Civilized Tribe Act of from above, William Floyd Cook, who was one at the first uh, time it was filed, was my great grandfather. His parents were filing on this his behalf because of them believed to have indigenous American ancestry. However, we can see that neither of them had approved roll numbers in the columns after their names, meaning that themselves were also not official members of the Choctaw tribe. No more. When I was working on it, I had trouble reading in the hand and the lower text and had to zoom it in. So that's what happened when he zoomed it in. He could see. Father's enrollment. So we had to enroll back into our own tribes and then didn't even get because they were putting somebody else in the place of those tribes, the white people. First notice the part written on the dark black line. I have trouble reading it, but I can make of it refused that's what it says refused by the department 
refused by the part department. Wow. Refused by the department. So we know that this application was rejected, which don't matter, because now you you know what your father knew that he was from that tribe. I immediately started wandering. See, they made us leave our cultures, leave our land. <laughs> so where we went, we probably get killed if we acted like some Indians. We had to act like whites. So we know that this application was rejected. I immediately started wondering why it was rejected, though I knew that this application wasn't going to be 400 100% Native American down this line anytime recently so my first thought was that there was some percentage that they didn't meet however there are more models on this document that will help us figure out what happened and if I actually have a Native American ancestry through this line because they actually changed like you said Cambridge University around this time changing the mitochondria the, the foundation for the mitochondrial DNA to a white woman so therefore if you didn't match being white you, you understand what I'm saying like it was crazy man where it was like totally reversed now you had to be white to be an Indian totally reversed when we look into the remarks section, what it seems to say is application for number one received June in 1906. Mother of number one applicant, MRI, C. Samuel G. Number one is referencing William Floyd Cook, who is listed in the application. Now, first applicant role. Uh, I did a little research to figure out what the rest was since there I've learned it quite a bit. Okay. MCR is short for Mississippi Choctaw rejected. So by this point, it looks like many Adams Cook, Floyd, William Floyd's mom, had already been rejected by when she applied for Choctaw citizenship. I wanted to know why, though, and also wanted to know who Samuel B. G. was. Luckily, I've been able to find copies of her testimony. Uh, from her appeal application which is amazing because even if they don't work out there's a lot of stuff here here's the first page of the testimony right here so this is a uh, dot number 5806 the Department of Interior this is from the Department of Interior which you know right is your unit now is with your United Nations right Commission of the five civilized tribe Muscogee Muscogee Indian Territory is down in Mississippi Right, March 2nd, 1903, in the matter of the application of Minnie Adam Cook for the identification of herself and her minor child, Virgil Adam Cook, as Mississippi Choctaws, BNS Johnson, attorney for applicants. So they had an attorney. Minnie Adam Cook, being duly sworn, testifies as follows Examination by the commission. So, this is a whole bunch of questions that they asked her, and they're showing you they took documentation. Okay, so all these questions are basically just trying to find out who was her blood brother and all these things and just prove that she is Indian. In fact, many sisters, mother, uncle who applied too. I have read through all the testimonies and, and all they all got rejected. <laughs> but it didn't really say why other than because of Samuel B. G. case ruling. However, one of the most important things I did learn from these testimonies is that many Adams claim to be 132nd Choctaw through her mother's side. That would put her at around 3.125 which is worth mentioning since I didn't get any Native America that showed up in my DNA test. Of course you're not because like I told y'all before man DNA testing are part of the problem. They're going to colonize all melanated people with Africa. No, you're not going to be an American. You're not going to be an American in this part of the plan. But yet and still, all of y'all still taking DNA tests. And I brought a video out to show you about that too. About DNA tests is a hoax. It's a hoax. There's no way. They can tell you that. Why do we rely on the person, the nigga who came last? 
to tell you where you came first. Like, it don't even make sense. I'm still working on my way through it, all right? So, yeah, y'all check that out, man. The attorneys for the Choctaw and Chicksaw Nations, which I'm not sure if they are for them as if appointed by them for the government's appointed attorneys, okay? Think that Samuel, B.G., and the others are mistaken, and there is no record of a Wilson being descendant of Sam Cobb of Sam Cobb but there is a William Cobb who was accepted as a Choctaw and could trace back to the Cobb in question I also found no but there is a Cobb who they say was a descendant I mean, at this time he was a chief they say he was a mix uh, but man listen so he's gonna keep on figuring out from from England all the way to here he's going to figure out his descendant because the Englanders and Britons came over and you know uh, and like you said it was war going on on both sides man so there's a war going on on and no one is man is safe from so you have Britain over here you have France over here but like I said man there's a lot of things that you gotta pe put pieces to puzzle p pieces of the puzzle together but you know Britain you know about the solemn covenants you know about Britain um, becoming uh, tainted with this solemn covenant um, with these whites um, and you gotta know that your they defiled the creator in, in so many ways the Canaanites and Alexander alright so so the treaty of dancing rabbit creek was a treaty signed on September 27 1830 and proclaimed on February 24, 1831 between the Choctaw American Indian Tribe and the United States government. This was the first removal treaty carried into the effect under the Indian Act removal. Alright. So yeah man, we just doing a little research and we got a lot more research to do. But we just want to narrow it down, man, and get to the actual. I want to narrow it down to get to my actual tribe in Choctaw, my actual clan that's in the Choctaw tribe. Because we know Choctaw is just a, uh, it's almost a misnomer. You know, because Choctaw came from, I can't remember, it's a chief who named it, but that was already after the invasion. So all these tribes on the Mississippi, Louisiana, these were families, man. They were families spread it far and wide, spoke the same language. Man, listen. It's that real. So we want to read a little bit more into this DeSoto cat. Give us a little more information. So he's in Georgia. The first European to explore the interior of what is now called the state of Georgia. Okay, the state of Georgia. Well, it used to be Mississippi was Hernando de Soto in fact de Soto entered the state on two occasions during the course of his expedition Hernando de Soto was born about the year 1500 in Spain as a very young man he participated in the conquest of Panama the conquest of Panama okay and we'll get into that also we'll go over with, I want to take you in over to Panama in 1903 or 1907 I'm gonna take you over to Panama in 1907 in just one second okay oh all right never mind let's go to Panama we can go to Panama right now all right now it says that Hernando de Soto was born about in 1500 right in, in Spain a very young man participated in the conquest of Panama so he participated in the conquest of Panama too and Nicaragua and later he played a major role in the conquest of the Incas in Peru where he became immensely wealthy wealthy alright let's go over to Panama though let's check this out this is with the Library of Congress okay now this is a native woman a native woman and then they say a Negro baby. So now you can correlate. And if a native woman and a Negro baby are the same, that's her seed. So it's telling you that the Negroes are the natives. Or what you call the Negroes are native people. The copper color are native people. Are the native people. 
Washington, D.C. Native woman washing a Negro baby. Now, do you think that it's going to be a white lady washing a white lady washing a, a Negro baby, a so-called Negro baby, a melanated baby? Okay, this is in 1903. 1903. I don't know what this is, but there is a Hebrew strong accordance to that. Yah, Yahad, Yadad, Yadid, Yadid just means um love. Uh, Yadid means um. Um, relation, relation, like kin, kin, all right, kinfolk. Check this out. Library of Congress, 1903. What is that? So, 190 Congress, they got a Femi from 1903, the Library of Congress, and as you can see, this is, they say, a native woman right here, and this is a Negro baby. And as you can see, this obviously is her seed, and they are of the same descent. Of the same descent. This is in Panama. Nassau B.I. is in Panama. And they want to colonize you to say, oh yeah, you can say, yeah, well, by 1903, yeah, we discovered it and we brought slaves over there. Yeah, I'm sure about it. But you have to understand that all over these lands, the Naga was there. You don't have to be from one part of the world. You don't have to be from one part of the earth. The Most High puts you all over this planet. You are indigenous to every land <coughs> on every continent. This has been a presentation of, of the, the Library, Library of, of Congress. Congress. Showed you that. All over this world, man. We don't die, we multiply. 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 That's a book I want to get into, too. So, the conquest of Panama, right? Nicaragua, and later he played a role in the Incas in Peru. The Incas in Peru. If he played a role in the Incas in Peru, then who played a role in the Maya? You know what I'm saying? Like, where he became immensely wealthy, not content, content with mere riches, De Soto wanted to be socially elevated to a Marquis, the equal of a Spanish conquistador, Francisco Pizarro. He returned to Spain. And in 1537, Charles V granted him the right to explore and conquer Florida, a territory whose only known borders at the time were the lower Atlantic coast and peninsular Florida. The nature and extent of the interior, present day North America, were completely unknown at the time. So, DeSoto's fleet sighted the western coast of Florida near Tampa Bay on May 25, 1539. He landed about 600 men and about 220 horses and from there he proceeded northward to present-day Tallahassee where he and his men spent the winter of 1539 and 40 in the territory of Chieftain Appalachia. Okay, so in 1540 the sold on his army in the Appalachia from, uh, departed from the Appalachia by day end and had reached just inside of the southern border of what is now called Georgia, a few miles southern, present-day Cairo, all right, present-day Cairo, all right. We're not talking about Cairo, Egypt, in in the Middle East, neither in Africa. We're talking about Cairo here, all right. When they reached, we have our own Nile Valley. That's the Mississippi River. When they reach, check out my video with that, with America is Egypt. When they reach the Flint River, they build a crude boat and ferried along everyone to the western side of the river. From there, they proceeded to the Chick Chickasaw Wachi Swamp, where they came uh, to the chieftain of the Kapachaki. 
After spending six days in Kapachaki, they resumed traveling northeast, proceeded up the western river of the Flint River to near present day Montezuma. Montezuma, that's here in the Americas. This is in North America. Montezuma, it's a river, present day Montezuma, where they cross, uh, where they cross. Now, Montezuma is supposed to have been this uh, chief over at the Aztec tribe. These are the Aztecs. Okay? The Aztecs were after the Inca, right? So now we have a present day Montezuma where they crossed to the eastern side of the river and came to a chieftain of Toa. Toa looks like Tao. Tao. On March 23rd, a short stay, they continued to the northeast until they came to Akmoji River. Okay, now you see this Montezuma, the Toa, the, the, the Akmoji River. These are tribal names. Okay, so take your notes on that. In an abandoned village on the island of Akamochi, the Soto Company discovered meat left roasting on a barbecue, a barbacoa, barbecue, a wooden frame suspended over a wood fire. Okay, this is the first recorded instance of a barbecue in Georgia. They proceeded upstream a few miles until they came to the chieftain. Why you think so many of us barbecue like? That's all from living outside, man. That's all from being at one with the nature. That's where we get it from. Now we don't even do it in the barbecue in the ground no more. We go buy grills. <laughs> we don't we don't feast from the land. We go buy grills. We go buy everything, man. Alright. So because the people of Ishisi met them peacefully, the Soto ordered that a wooden cross be set atop a mound in the town and DeSoto and his men tried to explain its significance to the Indians. DeSoto ordered that a wooden cross be set at the top of the mound in the town and DeSoto and his men tried to explain its significance to the Indians. From the Ishisi they proceeded the northeast to the Okanchi River, okay, where they were found the chieftains of Atamaha, Akult, and Patafa. The chieftain of Akult was the most powerful of these three. From Akult, they continued eastward, crossing the Savannah River, okay, then proceeding westward down the Tennessee Valley, entered Georgia for the second time around 1540. Alright, so y'all can see. What I was looking to see if he give a description. What they're covering is the lands. For sure, DeSoto and his army departed from the main town of Kusa. And traveled to the south crossing the Atawa River. At a town of Itaba. Okay, the Etowa Mound site and proceeding. Okay, now... A lot of you could say, okay, well, we could see where, okay, they came with the crop. Yeah, for sure. That is an idol. An idol. It's an idol. We're talking about these people who learned from the Greeks. So they came with symbolism. Um, but that don't have anything to do with your people. You got to understand that. They don't have anything to do with your people. Um, many of us never didn't understand um, what created us from dunk man you can look at the, the history of Indians we did so many idol worships across the man from the three ring fire worship to we did so many idol worship that's why we were warring with each other and so, it's not like the their God came to conquer us. Nah, man. This is one God doing the whole thing. Controlling everything. So that's why you can't, you know, dim your brain and say, Oh yeah, they brought, they brought this white God and this one God. Because we worship so many. Okay, well if you want to continue to worship so many gods, then you go ahead. But you got to understand. Your, your foundational ledger. 
Well, just because you weren't connected to your brother, the whole world was in connection and sync in one in in one way. Alright. So man, yeah, y'all can check that out, man. We uh I can hit y'all with the link for that. That's the Soto though going into the Mississippi. In 1540 with Hernando de Soto. Alright. They're bringing in this pig, man. The word Razorback may bring to mind University of Arkansas and his team mascot. But long before 1909, when UA adopted the mascot, a Razorback had been introduced to the New World in 1540 by the Hernando de Soto expedition. The black Iberian pig joined the Spanish conquistadors during their journey through the southeast. These were long-legged pigs, not fat hogs that we know today. They were lean animals, said, and they were some badass animals too, said Jim Knight, University of Alabama. Okay, the University of Alabama archaeology archeo archaeology professor. Okay, so you could check the University of Alabama for some records also. All right, now they're probably using these pigs to eat us. I'm not sure to clean up the mess. De Soto went ashore near present-day Tampa, Florida with 620 men, women, and children, 220 horses, and a large herd of pigs. A large herd of pigs. A large herd of pigs. Now, he came with these pigs, remember? Now, remember the story of when Yahshua, when they ran into the man and he put the, he ran the evilness into the pig? He ran, he put the demon, took the demon out of the man and put it to the pig and put them into the pigs. Remember that? You remember that story in Caesar's Messiah and the, and the um, destruction of Jews and in Matthew? So at the same time of your destruction, how Ashur was here and you thought that it was Vespasian fighting for it, fighting you, but it's actually Yahshua and our descendants fighting for us because the Roman Greeks had captured him. So he, how could he be fighting with the Roman Greeks, with the with Rome when Rome had captured him? If you go to John, if you go to John, which was Elijah. In the new scriptures, he's talking to the Jews about that capture. They captured John. Okay, so man, and that's Yohanathan, that's Eleazar, that's Elijah. So, so the pigs were to, were to be used as starters for pig farms in the new Spanish colony. Some were gifted to local chiefs who soon enjoyed the taste of cooked swine and adapted the meat to their, to their barbecues or raised cooking platforms. The remaining pigs served as emergency food source during DeSoto's trek through Florida, Georgia, Carolinas, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, and Arkansas. This was Mississippi. Georgia, Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, and Arkansas. All right, so you can see as you putting this together, these dudes brought pigs, man. These dudes were Canaanites. All right, with Greek philosophies because they learned from the Greeks. So uh, they say that millions of native indigenous people died because they lacked previous exposure to swine born disease. This previous exposure was critical in building their immune systems against the deadly diseases. So we didn't even have no pigs or eat no pig before then. These diseases included brucellosis, uh, brucellosis, anthrax, anthrax, 
leptocirrhosis, tu tuberculosis, trichinosis, cirrhosis, and various strains of flu. And considering the fact that many swine diseases can be transmitted to deer and even turkeys, the most important food animal used in the southeastern Illinois, uh, the likely that this occurred becomes even greater. The author's right. Okay, so University of Arkansas archaeologist George Sabo the third city's 16th and 17th this uh, century eyewitness descriptions uh, company southeastern Native American population numbers. The DeSoto Chronicles describe Easter. So you can check the University of Arkansas archaeological arch um, records. Alright. Uh, peace up to Dr. Uh, uh, Chief Langley too over in the Uchi tribe. He's an actual archaeologist. So he can tell you a lot of, give you a lot of game on our actual people. Okay, as you can see, this right here. Alright. As you can see right here, and this funny stuff, you know what I'm saying? They came with that funny stuff because they they wasn't even rocking the creator right. Not even right, okay? They gave a small glimpse. They weren't even rocking the creator right, man. So, man, let's get it together, okay? Let's get it together. French traveled down the Mississippi River about 130 years after DeSoto. They described eastern Arkansas in far terms. They described the land as being sparsely populated with only few Indian villages. It's fairly certain DeSoto had an impact on the Indian demographics. Alright, so I hit y'all over the head with that link, man. So, it gets that real. You know what I'm saying? This is the Library of Congress, man. It gets that real. So, man, y'all, you know... Stop trying to make me feel like a mother and a fatherless child. Stop trying to make us feel like a mother and a fatherless child, man. We, bro, we've been here. This is our land. The Creator has done so many things for us, and we gotta understand it. And He's managed to leave us trails, my man. Trails. Beautiful trails. beautiful trails I want to uh, Richie Havens man I just want to want to vibe out to Richie Havens man this song is called this song is called Freedom this was a, some something he did in Woodstock in 1969 it's real intense man Y'all check it out. Freedom, 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 freedom
Like I'm a 